Hey, Kyle here with kylecgraves.com. Let's talk about what happens if your appraisal, appraised value of your property uh, or the property that you're buying comes in low. So first of all, take a deep breath, relax, it's gonna be okay. Most of the time that I see appraisals come in lower than the purchase price, only about 10% of the time do I see those deals get canceled. Most of the time, they get worked out. And we're gonna walk through five different remedies to uh, resolve a short appraisal. So first of all, why is an appraisal even necessary? Why is it driving a majority of the transaction? The reason why it's doing this is because the appraisal is there mainly for when the buyer has financing uh, to purchase a home. And the appraisal is for the lender to make sure that they're not lending more than the home is worth in the event that there's ever a foreclosure. They wanna make sure that their money is safe um, secured by that home and its value. So an appraisal is needed if your buyer is uh, using financing. If they're using cash, then the appraisal really doesn't matter unless there's an appraisal contingency in the contract. So the appraisal matters to the lender and it's the only way to get the deal closed um, if there's financing on the deal. So why might the appraisal have come in short? Well, normally most of the time what happens is this is because of the market. All right, so if you're in a really strong seller's market, that means that prices are going up because there's not a lot of homes available. So in a seller's market, what it tends to happen is you have a lot of overpriced homes. Eventually the market gets to the point where homes continue to be overpriced and appraisers correct that um, by using more steady data than just the rising market uh, data, okay? Um, so that's probably what happened. There's a couple other reasons. You might have an appraiser who maybe just used comps uh, that may not have been the best. Again, that's subjective. Um, you might have an inexperienced appraiser. Unfortunately, there's no way to pick the appraiser or have a second one um, redone. Once you have that one appraiser uh, or one appraisal done, that's it. The only way to get another appraisal um, on a conventional loan would be to switch lenders. Uh, if you're using a government-backed loan, you're just out of luck. That appraisal is gonna be stuck with the property for six months no matter who buys it. So let's talk about five main solutions that you can use uh, to remedy a low appraisal, okay? Um, so let's first talk about kind of what we're talking about, what we mean by a low appraisal. Let's say that up here we have our purchase price, okay? And let's say our purchase price is $200,000, all right? so. You go under contract for $200,000. Either you're the seller and selling it for 200 or you're the buyer and buying it for 200. Okay, and then let's say an appraisal happens and it comes back and that appraised value is now 180, okay? So it hits 180 and now there's this uh, 20 grand gap that needs to be made up. The appraiser is basically saying the contract is overpriced $20,000 and we need to find a remedy for that. So. Solution number one is to make up the difference. So if you're the buyer, this is where you're going to come down that full amount. So if this was uh, $200,000 and it came in, let's say at 190, then this spread here is $10,000, okay? So that means as the buyer, you would bring an extra $10,000 to the table uh, on top of what you're already paying for your down payment and your closing costs. Now, some ways that you can uh, separate this a little bit is this is only if you're paying the minimum down payment. So let's say you're paying the minimum down payment right now, then you'd have to bring this extra money to the closing table. If you're already putting a lot of money down, let's say you're already putting $50,000 down, well, then what you can do is you can just subtract that 10,000 from the 50. So if you, on your $200,000 house, you're bringing $50,000 down and it short appraises 10,000, Instead of bringing $50,000 down, you're gonna bring $40,000 down and $10,000 for the appraisal difference. Your down payment is gonna come down a little bit, but you'll bring the same money to the table. The only people this really affects is when uh, you're not able to pull that shortage out of your down payment funds, which happens for a lot of people because most people are putting the minimum down. Okay, all right. So that is if you make up the difference here. Uh, another option is to get a price reduction, okay? Um, and a price reduction is where you're gonna ask the seller to come down uh, pretty much the entire amount. So again, if, if we had a $200,000 house uh, and you wanted a price reduction, let's say it appraised at uh, 195, then you would ask the seller for $5,000. 
Okay, so the seller would then uh, basically come off the purchase price, $5,000. You would write an addendum to the contract saying that the new purchase price is $195,000, and then you'd be good to go. Now, that one's a little bit difficult to do normally because obviously the seller doesn't want to come down. Um, most likely as a buyer, you don't want to come up. So a good middle ground is to split the difference. And splitting the difference is basically where you're doing a very similar scenario as one and two, but you're just splitting the two in half. So these, this is especially prominent on more short appraisals. So let's say your purchase price is 200 and it gets short down to 180. Okay. Well, our gap here is $20,000. Okay. So the buyer doesn't want to come up 20,000. The seller doesn't want to come down 20,000. So a remedy is the buyer is going to come down 10,000 and the seller is going to come, uh, I'm sorry, the buyer is going to basically bring the extra 10,000 and the seller is going to take off uh, 10,000 from the purchase price. So they're meeting in the middle. That's how they're splitting the difference here. Okay. Um, I probably should have switched these around. So it instead says uh, seller and then buyer, but you get the gist of it. Um, you're basically meeting in the middle. So however much your difference is, let's say it shorts $30,000, then the buyer's gonna bring 15,000, the seller's gonna come down 15,000. Another option that you have is to challenge the appraisal. This is super difficult, okay? I have done a few challenges and I've only ever seen an appraiser change the value once and he only changed by $1,000. Most of the time, you're just not going to find an appraiser who is going to accept a challenge of the value. So if you do get your appraisal back and it's short, you can have the lender challenge it. And what they'll do is ask the listing agent for uh, comparable homes to use instead of the, the comps that the appraiser used. Normally what's gonna happen is the appraiser is gonna review it, come back and say, no, the comps that I provided were solid. Um, and they're gonna disregard whatever was in it. It's normally what happens, uh, just something to expect. You can do it, there is a possibility that it could happen, but it's just super uh, low chance that that's ever going to work. Something that you can do to mitigate um, an appraiser using comps that you might not want, or maybe you have comps that you think are gonna be really solid. Um, and this is something more for your agent. Your agent can actually set comps out at the house um, before the appraiser comes to the property. So the appraiser can go and see, here's where here's the comps that we're using to uh, base the purchase price on. And this isn't swaying the appraiser in any way. This is not illegal. Um, this is an ethical way to say, this is how we are supporting the purchase price of the property. And I think that listing agents should be doing this anyway. If you're, if you have a listing agent, your listing agent is the person who should have the, uh, d uh, the data support for the backing of the purchase price. And so something that they can do that's very easy is just to print out some comps, set them on the table. Uh, so when the appraiser gets there, they can see this is how we're arriving at this value. Otherwise an appraiser is walking into the home and they don't know what the story of the home is. So um, maybe they don't know what repairs were, were made or improvements that were made on the home. So a listing agent can set out comps of how, where they're getting to that purchase price along with um, any data about repairs or improvements or things that are increasing the value if there aren't comps to support it. Okay, last but not least is to cancel the deal. All right, uh, this only happens 10% of the time. Um, doesn't happen that often, but really the appraisal is there to protect the lender, but it's also there to protect uh, the buyer. Okay, the only person it really doesn't benefit is the seller because the seller obviously wants to, uh, you know, sell the house for as much money as possible, um, and then they don't have to worry about the home anymore. As the buyer, the appraisal really does protect you if it comes in short, and the reason why is because they're making sure that you're not overpaying for the property. Okay, this is disappointing if you ever get to the point in the deal where you have to cancel it because of a short appraisal, but it really is protecting, making sure that you're not overpaying. You don't want to overpay for a house. There's no home worth immediately being negative equity on a property, okay? Um, unless you can justify its value. Appraisals are normally pretty solid. They're gonna be pretty rock solid over a good period of time until the market shifts quite a bit later in the future. So if you have to back out, 
It's going to be disappointing. You're allowed to grieve it, but you're probably going to find something even better. That's what seems to always happen. Anytime I have buyers that uh, they either have inspections that go wrong or they have appraisals that go wrong. If they ever cut their losses and find something else, they end up finding something that was even better. It just seems to work out that way. So all in all, if you do have a short appraisal, there are remedies. The best thing that you want to do, talk to your lender, talk to your realtor, come up with a game plan, have them show you some options and see what it would look like. See what it would look like uh, if you made up the difference. See what it would look like if you got a price reduction. See what it would look like if you split the difference. And then go to the seller and see what you can do to negotiate and figure out the best, uh, the best plan moving forward. All right, thanks so much for watching.